you. We've got four guests. So boys in the booth, let's go ahead. Let's bring everybody in. And we can do an introduction. Hey, oh, here we go. Hello. Look at Jason. There's you're the in Tucci. The, you're in the live Jason. from a secret headquarters for the 2020 the year of clarity here, 20th anniversary. Zebras, how you guys doing? Pretty good, you? Well, you well, yeah. we're just hoping <laughs> something changed and something stayed the same. All the same flavors in the same place. Good to see everybody here live broadcasting around the world. I want to yep. say hello to all the friends in Europe and abroad, everywhere. You're hitting us up on the chat already. Holy smoke. Yeah, so let me do a quick little introduction, and we're going to get into this. So you all know Louie to my screen, hey. right? Buenas right. Era, buen noite, buenas tardes. This Bonsoir. is the part where I get to do the Brady Bunch. Below me is Ethan, <laughs> who is a student hey, hey, everyone. currently at BYU, right, in Idaho, uh, right. right? And then, well, oh, here, we'll go here, corner down here, Jason, <laughs> who is an instructor here locally here in L.A. and Glen and, and specifically in Glendale, correct? That's correct. Yep. And then over here in the other corner, this is so hard to do. <laughs> in the other <laughs> corner, we've got Valentin who's another student who's now also in the industry. So we want to talk about how J uh, Louie and Jason as instructors start and getting this going with kids that are coming into there. And those two, these two guys are also teaching at a high school level, right? So they're getting kids at like 15 years old, 14 years old, 16, right? So we want to talk about this, especially now with things like ZBrush Core Mini, which is free. Um, and then there's ZBrush Core and full ZBrush. Right. So everyone knows who Louie is, but Jason's been in the film makeup world. Right. So this is a guy that knows makeup. He's been in the film world and now he's teaching ZBrush at a high school level and getting kids involved with learning something like ZBrush to kind of get an outlet for art. You know, he's worked at K&B for much of his career uh, for the films and makeup artists. So, Jason, thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part. Say hello yes, to the team. Thank you. Happy to be here. And then we got, of course, Louis Tucci. I already said hello. We all know who Louis is. <laughs> Ethan, go ahead and just say hello so everyone uh, can hear you. Everyone, it's great to be here. Awesome. Thanks for being here. And Valentin, you're great to be here too. All right. So I want to start the discussion off first with the, the teachers, real quick, just to kind of lay down the idea here with Louis and with Jason being teachers for you. You know, you got kids coming in, and I know Ethan was first introduced to ZBrush in your class, Jason, as uh, a freshman in high school. So what are you guys finding at, like, that high school level of kids coming in? What is their really understanding of something like this, being able to sculpt digitally? And now, of course, we're going to show some pictures of Jason's students. They're even 3D printing stuff. So we'll, we'll start with Jason. We'll start with you. What What is your – where are you coming from as a teacher when you're getting kids for the first time walking into your classroom? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, part of our class is, uh, you know, we follow kind of basic art, you know, drawing fundamentals. But, um, you know, one really exciting thing that we're able to do is, you know, we've got access to ZBrush and some other software. Uh, so just right off the bat, kids are blown away. A lot of them find themselves saying, I didn't even know this was a thing you could even do, uh, let alone something you could do at high school. And granted, I should say, you know, uh, I'm at a school where we're very... Uh, fortunate to have you know access to the software um so you know i should say that right off the bat um but it, you know one thing is just that wow factor for students and then when you actually get them on the machines uh you know it's incredibly empowering great louis how about you from your experience i think it's been an extraordinary uh, sort of path for me to take having come from pixelogic and then jumping into education full-time I've seen a number of students who, for the first time, were engaging with digital sculpting and having an opportunity to have worked with Jason before uh, in his district to advance and develop curriculum there. I think, you know, for me, the, the most important thing is that initial sense of joy that people have when uh, essentially being able to overcome what they perceive to be a barrier and then all of a sudden becomes this very sort of natural process of design meeting. Um, imagination and i think that's the the core sort of fundamental thing at, at the root of zbrush is that that fusion between that that wonderful technical capacity that it has and at the same time just affording people an opportunity once they once they open their mind up 
to the possibilities of what they could do as individuals, I think we've, we're starting to see some tremendous, we have been seeing tremendous results over the course of the last several years. And again, that buy-in from, from not only the, the school sites in particular, but the local school districts and the colleges as, uh, as we've continued to grow and expand offerings educationally, I think we're seeing a more, uh, a more sort of aware student body. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been very engaging and very exciting and again, I'm very fortunate because my experiences are both at the high school level locally here in Los Angeles and uh, across a, a few colleges. So I've seen a, a sort of a, a wonderful sort of mix of perceptions and mm, skill levels just growing exponentially. Okay, so I have a question then for the, our two students because there's things asking how easy it is for you know someone at that age level getting into ZBrush. So Ethan, you started with obviously with Jason in high school. You came to the Noman summer sessions three times, right? Three times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I enjoyed myself. I had to come back. Yeah. And then Ethan's more of like you came more from like an illustration mindset, right? To being That's discovering right. this 3D piece. Um, so for you, Jason, I mean, for you, Ethan, just coming in, what was it like for you? How easy was it for you to kind of grasp and get this idea of starting to use 3D even in your work? Well, like has already been expressed, it's a completely different mindset. And of course, as someone who was new to it, it's very much a difficult process to think in a different way and get over all those hurdles that you encounter as a artist that's new to 3D. Um, personally, uh, I agree with, um, with Louis completely. It's once you get it, you get it, and it's just mind to screen, and it's really just Thrilling. Um, the major obstacles that I had to face were just technical stuff, menus, settings, but don't we all have to <laughs> deal with that eventually, you know? Right. And then Val, for you, especially for you, you're coming, you were coming from another country, right? And then you came over here to the States and learning ZBrush. And you did, you were uh, also at a younger age when you first saw ZBrush for the first time, right? I think I started a little bit later than Ethan. I started at a collegiate level. So I had some 3D experience, like just playing around and a little bit of curiosity more than anything. And to me, it really clicked. Uh, I was one of those kids that had the light bulb go off, right? Like, I want this when I actually opened ZBrush for the first time. When more than just playing in 3D, uh, it became artistic. It became a mix of technical and artistic that created something fully artistic. So to me, the, the reason why I'm a professional now is because ZBrush made me want to pursue an education in, in 3D and make it my profession. Awesome. You know, I think there's something important. I'd like to jump in yeah. just to say something very important there. They they represent the two uh, gentlemen with us, Ethan and Valentin, represent for me at least a a very disparate sort of reality where Ethan was a you know in his ninth grade of high school, and I came into contact with him, and he was very young and and able to sort of just take his design sensibilities and put them into practice in a 3D space. And then you know Valentin was fully immersed in the Nomen School program, where he was having his frontal lobe assault assaulted uh, constantly. And I think for, for those two, there were very different realities. You know, at the one level where we're talking about teaching at the college level, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very serious sort of grinder. And I think Valentin, for, for all, if I could speak for you to this degree, having worked with you so closely in that capacity, I think what, what he was coming to terms with was also the critical analysis component of how far he could go as a human being because of the flexibility associated with you know art first and technology sort of or the technical capacity of things second and i think that 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 can't be understated as a, as a whole i think that seems to be the universal thread that runs very harmoniously through that trajectory both from high school students whether they're at the high school level in the high school programs or high school summer camp at the Noman school uh, i think that you know all the way even to the cal state university system where i've been a professor before as well i think that 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 sort of the, the thing that changes there is a person's critical analysis of what they could become as an individual. It, it kind of moves away from just designing and design software to the full capacity as a human being and what a person could really achieve and where they see themselves doing that. You know, and, I, and I'd like to throw out a shout out to at least uh, one person, if I could really quickly, is to sure. you know, Ma Max Dayan, who is the um, educational director at the Noman School of Visual Effects, had a profound influence uh, even on me as a, as a student many moons ago. And I think that, you know, having someone like that uh, to push and promote things 
the way that he has over the years uh, was also instrumental for me. So I, I think we're all kind of byproducts of those that have come before us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right now I'm showing works of Val, Val's and Ethan's work. So this is one of Ethan's pieces. And I was just cycling through some of Val's works just to give you guys an idea as students where they're coming from, what they've been creating even at a younger age like they've been doing. So Jason, for you, because I know you you're getting them like Louie at a at that younger age and then all through high school. What are you finding for your students where it really clicks for them? Is it when especially with parents, are you finding it's hard to for the kids to explain what they're doing and how do they explain? It? Is it I know you have 3D printers and you're showing them. We've got some images of what the kids have been doing in your class with 3D printers. So what are you finding for uh, the kids where it really clicks for them to go home? Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously ZBrush is in itself just uh, another tool, but obviously it can do, uh, you know, so much more than, you know, your traditional tools. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's really just uh, when students, you know, find themselves working with the software, uh, yeah, their parents that might not understand it at first, they might be saying, oh yeah, I'm, you know, doing 3D sculptures and 3D models. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, you know, 3D printing, it's that whole process of taking it from, you know, a concept to, you know, maybe illustrating it uh, and then, you know, doing like a digital painting and then finally a 3D model and uh, something that they can print. And yeah, that, that moment, like, you know, in like your open houses and your back to school nights, when, you know, parents get to come by and see, whoa, you know, and they get to hold uh, a 3D model in their hands. And then it kind of clicks for parents and, you know, students, uh, certainly when they, when they print something or when they're able to see it and, uh, it, you know, they see their idea, you know, come to life. Uh, right. Especially when they sometimes a lot of students struggle with drawing and things like that. So a ZBrush in that way uh, is incredibly helpful because they can just see their vision right away. You know, I think also too, Jason, we've worked together before. Jason and I were, uh, you know, fortunate enough to redevelop a curriculum for an entire school district that was UC approved. And I think that that, you know, that was driven and, and guided also by the fact that the technology is so, so seemingly uh, easy to plug in at various points throughout the the trajectory of what we wanted to offer educationally, both in drawing, sculpting, and design uh, across the spectrum of also, you know, facilitating physical production. I think, Jason, we would both agree in that case that, you know, the facility and the capacity of the software uh, as a whole and its dexterity really informed how and in what ways we expanded the educational offerings for families. You know, and for me, the, the jazzy part is really about reaching people who are from socioeconomically underprivileged circumstances and offering them a chance to engage with technology that is high level, that is professional technology, and perhaps change the landscape of, of not only uh, their lives, but also the industry as a whole to offer different perspectives uh, from people from different walks of life and backgrounds. Yeah. So, like, Ethan, you are right now at BYU, and you said your ultimate goal is to go to the main campus, and you are on a path to want to gain into the industry and ZBrush was one of the software pieces that gave you that drive to want to see what was going on in the industries, right? That's correct. Um, back in high school, I became just a tad bit obsessed with ZBrush. Well, he <laughs> did go to three summer he, camp. He, he took yeah. two. No, he went to the counselor. I want to say this because he was. A st we were working together. He went to his counselor and he changed his schedule to have art. I think it was two or three periods in a row. I don't know how you did it, but half the day, three periods. <laughs> spent half the day with us. Yeah. Oh, well, you did. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, where did, did this guy come did, from? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it took a little bit of convincing, but pulled it off. And so the plan right now is to take a step back, work on my traditional art and illustration skills that I may have neglected in high school, and eventually get into BYU's animation program and see where that takes me. So when you were in Jason's class, right? Because we're going to show some images throughout this stream here in a second. Um, what for you was it was it the 3d printing part that also helped you land something or was just you know i've i saw a cool feature that jason showed you and then that boom clicked for you and then you're like all right this is an art tool made for a computer and i can see the things i can make with it what were you, yeah. what were you finding it's it's the the collision of like 2d to like yeah. 3d experiences that's what really got me you know where in middle school i you know, I was uh, looking at like tutorials for drawing that weren't like, they were very step-by-step, -step, but you didn't really learn anything from it. Like how to draw a nose, they'd show you the lines you'd have to draw, but not why those lines are there. So being able to be, um, have the experience of going into a 3D software 
and then you know like say sculpting a nose and then being like oh so that's why that line is there and that's why we shade it this way and that's why the the uh, the combination of 2d and 3d practices that's when my like yeah. my inspiration and creativity with art just really took so off the, the 3d in essence helped you see why you're even doing stuff in 2d and that's, that's exactly cool. right yeah so for valentine for you right you came to Noman here in Holly hollywood go ahead louie i know you want to do it hollywood <laughs> under the shadow of the hollywood sign there there it is that's what we're looking live from the Noman school of visual effects i'm actually <laughs> in the pixelogic offices people don't realize this i'm back in one of my old offices here it's strange like a time warp i love the bun so val for you right you were in uh sweden switzerland 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 right and then you discovered Noman and mm -hmm. made a choice like that's a choice to I'm going to move. Hey, mom, dad, I'm moving to the U.S. and going to study. At That's Nome. pretty much what happened um, yeah. to, to bounce back on what Ethan and Jason said about drawing and like the concept of form in 2D. I was one of these people that got stuck when it came to drawing. It, the traditional aspect of it helped me, but it wasn't exactly what allowed me to go forward. It wasn't that creative breakthrough that I was looking for. And getting into ZBrush, understanding those forms in 3D so easily, it made me understand my traditional better and be able to go back. And that's where I decided that, hey, mom, mom, dad, I'm leaving. Goodbye. There is that school all the way over there where I could boot camp and just talk to people that actually know what 3D uh, is. <laughs> and, and that's what I want to do. And how, that's how what you, I did. How did you do that? Because I know my mom thought I worked at Pixar for like, I don't know, five, six years. And I still think my mom still thinks that I work at Pixar and my sister wants me to work at Pixar. So <laughs> um, I, I, it's a lot of convincing. It's years and years of being myself and being able to be more of an artistic driven person in general. You know, it's not like every, all of a sudden I had that wake up call. I was a more artistic person, right? So my body, my mind reflects what I do every day. So obviously there has been a couple of talks, but that was something that I did because here in Hollywood, California, there is that infrastructure ready for people like me to, to start to thrive and be educated in something that at the end is a job and not something that you ask for in Medici's to pay for your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's, Paul, there's a, there's a good point here in the commentary. You know, it says here, Mousy073 says, it's hard to come from a place of any particular difficulty and make something for yourself. The opportunities just aren't there. You know, this is, uh, this is also a matter for me of critical analysis of yourselves, wherever you might be. You know, each and every one of us uh, have come from someplace. And I can remember people thinking I was crazy, you know when discovering the software and how it changed my life and my trajectory as a human being. And I think Valentin and the I have spoken. Of Toronto from the basement in Toronto. I want to say hi to Roja. Thank you again. Uh, Roja Houche, a really great uh, 3D specialist and artist in his own right um, for introducing me. But I think Valentin is raising a good point. I think, you know, we come from far and wide. And I just want to address that for Mousy 073. Uh, you know, if you have the drive and put yourself into place where it's happening, you know, it may be difficult. I can remember sleeping on the floor in an apartment with some roommates and, you know, just a blanket and a pillow. And it didn't matter. All that mattered was that, you know, I had a chance to work with Paul in the morning and, uh, and have a chance to do it and just be here on the, on the campus. Um, yeah. I think know, I, I a think, good story too, right? He's from another country and found a way to get to where he needed to be to get into where he's, he's at now. Yeah. And I would say for everybody, you know, leave the fear at the door. I mean, fear is, fear is really something that we need to learn to manage. A lot of people ask me, you know, what are you doing these days? And I say, well, I'm in the, uh, I'm in the sort of business of maximizing human potential. And I think, you know, that I mean that very closely and very seriously. I think the three, my three fellow panel mates here can attest to that from having very intimate experiences with me. So if you're watching this out there, I'd like to send a message to everybody and say, you know, the, the technology is available and the resources are ever more so available than ever before. And we'll be waiting for you to help push you further. And, and basically take your skills to the highest level. Right. I, I sorry. If I yeah, go ahead. Ethan. I, go ahead. I completely agree. Um, I um, I was super fortunate enough to have the uh, teaching experience uh, or have the experience of being taught by um, Louie and Jason here. But um, a great great portion of my studies for ZBrush was just 
hours and hours of watching YouTube videos about it. It you can't underestimate how powerful that is. Really, like um, Michael Popovich, I mean, uh, Michael guy, Popovich right? <laughs> that has that huge series of just very intimate and detailed um, ZBrush videos, and I learned a great deal from those, along with the uh, awesome experiences I had with Louis and Jason. So the like uh, like Louis said, information is out there. You just have to look for it. Yeah, and, and it, this is part of why we are doing this right now too, is to give this information out there. And that last segment people like, but this segment's really about thinking: how do people get in, right? And how do people even start using ZBrush? And like, you got Ask ZBrush Master Joseph Drusty in here too, right? He's making hundreds of videos, right, on that too, to just get people an understanding of how to do things. Uh, so, and that, Jason, that can you hear brings me to that's a good. Go ahead. Yeah, so the point on that too is that I didn't. I, I wish I had some of the kind of technology was there when I was going oh, through school too, definitely. and that's part of the reason why you know I try to give people the information because it's one thing I never had, um, mm -hmm. and it's to me it's kind of like if you if you if I have the knowledge I want to share it, and that's I yeah, think what exactly. everyone here is kind of you know replicating as well. Yeah, and that's a hundred percent too. I know this panel looks very sort of masculine in its composition. I wish there was space to have more people because for me, the big thing right now is the the influence and the impact on young girls and technology and CAD-based applications that we're teaching, not just ZBrush as well. I don't want to make this myopic in its scope, but I mean, when, when you're dealing with more and more females at the college level, I'm so pleased to see that. And at the high school level, more oh, girls yeah. getting engaged with engineering and 3D printing. In my own class, mm -hmm. when we finally do get back to physical on-campus learning, I'm very fortunate as well to work with the Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, I have 13 3D printers in a room waiting for me. Oh, now you he's know? just gloating. Now he's just gloating. No, it's not. And I, and I say this because I think it's, I think it's really, I'd I say it for like what Joseph is saying, more awareness is more power. And I think the more people see that that's the norm, especially in communities that, that are, like I said before, in socioeconomically challenged circumstances. The more that the community members see that, the more that other community members see that, I think that we can push for a real great sort of overall change to many, many different facets of life and living. I think more yeah. people being yeah. more impactful is what I'm really after. And I, I want to break the myth a little bit too. Is like, yeah. I have a lot, if not 50% of my coworkers are women. So I know that it's not 50% across the entire industry, no. but more and more women are getting in there and they're amazing artists. And like, I can learn things from them every day. And I don't want that to be something that discourages those people from being getting in there. Absolutely. You know, and the one thing I, I think there's a good conversation we're having here is you know, there are some people in the chat saying, hey, it's tough for me. I can't afford to get maybe to the United States or this like this. You know, I know a lot of artists that are self-taught, just like Ethan was bringing up, watching videos. He was watching Michael Popovich videos. I don't know how you – were you able to keep up with him, Micro Machine? <laughs> or, or you, or Michael, give me a break, guys. <laughs> He's like me. I talk fast. He's my kind of guy, man. We're like, like Ray, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just grateful for the re uh, rewind button. I'll just say that. Much. The little gear, guys. One but, one point two five speed. He yeah, sounds like this, a regular guy. <laughs> but this is my point. Is I know art like guys. Even like someone like I can have other artists. I know that are huge names in the zebras community now. They learn by themselves, guys. I taught zebras to myself. I had no like Joseph said. We did not. Okay, we're gonna date ourselves right now. I had no notebooks. I had no, no zebra. What was ZBrush? I, I, it, it wasn't even existing yet when I started in 3D, right? I went out and I found it. I got it. I, I found it. And I taught ZBrush myself every night. I worked 15 hours a day, got home at midnight, stayed up till three in the morning. You got to want it if you want to get it. Okay. That's the biggest thing I say for education. I, I think that's a hundred percent true. He's nailing it right there. That's the black belt mentality. You need to do, you know, it's the sit-ups that you do and the push-ups you do when no one's watching that count the most, mm -hmm. you know, there's countless night like, the everybody in this room, I would say is, is guilty of spending way too much time in front of the computer um, and, and abusing themselves to levels that are, you know, for the, the three of us here, I've, Obviously, we've worked together in the in the facilitation and, uh, and making of ZBrush over the years across the last you know 15 years combined through the three of us. I think there's you know a tremendous um, commitment that goes into that, and a commitment to yourselves. I, that that I, I'd like to make sure that we're making sure that that is the message to everybody out there. Commit commit to your self growth and your your self development. And I think that you know then when you have tools and and technology available to make that much smoother and easier, like we had one ZBrush class back in the day with Eric Keller. If we didn't mention Eric Keller's name today, I would have been the heel of all heels. 
uh, Eric was the you know teacher to I guess Paul would you say that you, you were in Eric's class at some point as well because uh, I was no, I would I, say it's no I took Maddie Spencer's because no. when yeah. I discovered ZBrush I couldn't find anybody to talk to about it and I'm nobody like, even knows what it was I, I, I'm like what is and then I found Noman and I actually came as an extension student took one class I would go to work and then I would come to that class and then go home and mess with it and I just had somebody else that I could talk to at least that thought this way and using an application it would, to me a computer is just a new medium to us all mm -hmm. right and zbrush is just now my center point of getting to where i need to go and my whatever's in this crazy head of mine so but i think val made a good a good thing too i want to come back to val and then jason i'm going to come to you after val because i want to show your students work that they're doing in your high school with the prints too Val, i know one thing in a pre-discussion you talked about was getting to a school like Noman, you found, okay, this is really how it is in the industry, right? You found, look, there's not, okay, I'm gonna work for four hours on this and then that's my day, Yeah. Right? Can you touch on that a little bit? What your discovery going from, you found, okay, there's a lever I gotta hit to really make this happen. Definitely, it's a little bit like Louis said, it's the push-ups that you do when no one's watching. The, the advantage of, for me, going to Noman was that on top of having access to teachers like you, like Louis, like Eric Keller, I had Eric Keller, he's been in the game for a while, yeah. uh, is that you're constantly surrounded with people that have the same drive as you, that have the same motivation, and they don't stop when you do. You're taking a break, they're not taking a break. So you have those people that aren't stopping and that makes you wanna go back, that makes you wanna boot camp, that makes you wanna not go to sleep. And when you do go to sleep, you wanna wake up again. I found myself at 1 a.m. leaving the campus wishing that I could get some coffee and go, uh, going back and that for two years straight, you know? And I think that's really like teachers put you somewhere, but you're carrying yourself there. If, if you know what I mean, right? They open the doors for you. It's up to you to go through them. And, and for me, that was really that, that environment that those people created around me that I can see every day in the industry too. It, it's, you're not alone anymore. It's, there's a huge community out there. There are people working every day tirelessly to get better. And education doesn't stop, right? Like I've, I was, uh, I spent the last two hours before this talk, looking at your tips and tricks and taking notes because I'm still at school in a way. Like you never stop educating yourself. You so may. it's just that mental space that no one helped me get into. And I think too, you know, we had many conversations, uh, you and I after classes and such. You know, there comes a time when your technical proficiency. I I don't want uh, this to be misconstrued or our message today to be like, oh, go and kill yourselves and work night and day and be, you know, dysfunctional <laughs> human beings, because that's not it. That's not it either. <laughs> I think a lot of the a lot of your input and a lot of your scope as an artist comes from actually living. You know, and and I would say, you know, be reasonable, put the time in where the skill sets are concerned, but also be critical of mind and ask yourself, how am I growing growing as a as a human being outside of the technology, because then it, it finds its way back into your design capacity. You know, those characters and those those creatures or whatever it is you're looking to design are informed by your capacity to engage with the real world and how far you're willing to go to sort of see new things and, and absorb new things, you know? And I think out there at the limit is where some real growth happens. You know, I caught Valentin in his last, I think it was just an extra course he was taking, to be honest with you. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Yeah. And I think we did more critical analysis and critical thinking of him, of himself as a, as a being and how far he could go as a human being more so than the technical. I mean, he was at the level already because of the difficulty of the program. He could have been a TA for me. You know, he could have been helping me teach the class. And at the same time, you know, I think there was still that space for growth and learning as a, as a person and as a as a full person trying I think, to realize. I think that's a big thing. It's the, it's the never stop learning, never stop growing. And that's what you'll see across, you know, all the people that did our tips and tricks videos today, like we yeah. had ZBrush masters on them. And their main thing is they never stop learning. Yeah. Um, it's a great it's that, point. And as Val mentioned, you know, it's the constant growth. And then I always see, you know, anything that anyone does artistically or any information that's spread down, it can always come back. And that's where you get the inspiration and the different stuff. Like, you know, if I teach Val something, right? Val's gonna go make some amazing piece of artwork. And then I'm gonna see that and I'm gonna learn something from him. And it's this constant back and forth and growth and learning. Like it's not an isolated bubble as Louis was saying, like you've gotta like experience it all and that's part of the art. Yeah, it reminds me of when we didn't have, like me and Joseph, like we almost were, we were almost classmates at SCAD. It's a great school. 
Joseph went to SCAD. I almost went there. I almost went there. Savannah College of Art and Design, in case they're wondering. Right. So really what we're doing is kind of, for me, redoes what we did in classrooms, right? Is when I would do a trick, the, the next to me and next to me would be like, dude, what did you just do there? And we would share stuff. This is what we're doing right now in essence, right? We're just doing it digitally now, right? Um, so I want to, Jason, you can hear, I want to switch to Jason and show some of the work too, because Jason's background being a visual effects person, right? And now he's teaching digital. And then he's taking his kids back to physical also and painting. And he has said that students sometimes struggle to draw, but ZBrush allows them to kind of realize their ideas and simulations, right? So Absolutely. You, you touched on that and you were one of Jason's former students. So uh, I want to come back to that, Jason, too, and talk about that. And I'm going to show some pictures here. So you you were starting the kids in ZBrush in, at freshman year, right? Uh, yeah, in their in their first year of the program. Yeah. And then when do they get their hands on like printing? And this is work from his students at high school level. Um, they have access to printing that first year. Um, a lot of kids, you'd be surprised, don't take advantage of uh, printing their work, but they're they're offered. Um, you know, and like I said, it's it's obviously it's just another tool. Obviously, it's a, it's a tool on its own, uh, way mm -hmm. bigger than traditional tools. But um, but yeah, we, by you can see by the picture is just when you have these students take advantage of you know, taking a concept and bringing it from two D to three D, you know, uh, and then printing it. It's incredible. Uh, another thing we do a lot of the time is you know you can use something they make in ZBrush, albeit simplistic. Uh, you know, and then just being able to rotate that and stuff in 3D space, students can then use that, you know, for, for reference, you know, um, you know, so they can see the different angles of something that they wouldn't be able to have access to physically. Are you teaching them so, the painting, the physical pieces when they're done too? So are you taking them full right back and painting these? Yeah. Let's paint it. Yeah, yeah, we do that as well. So, uh, you know, there's obviously the poly paint and, you know, other stuff we can do within the programs, but then also, you know, painting it later on. Um, when I used to work in effects, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to work with, you know, nearby, you know, incredible sculptors, incredible concept artists. And I, you know, I, I saw this of sculpting and molding and casting. So to be able to kind of do something like that so much more quickly, and then students kind of get to see that whole process play out uh, is incredible. There was a comment there in the chat a half a second ago. I think I lost yeah. it. I wanted to. I wanted to comment on it. Go ahead. You know, somebody. Somebody said something about what about if you're working. What kind of advice would you give to someone who's working full time? Uh, I I think I would quote uh, the great American author and poet uh, Charles Bukowski. I would say that you know at the end of the day you have to find a way to you know save yourself a small little spark and hold it very close because from the you know from the smallest little spark the the world's largest fires can be lit again and again. And I, that, I don't say that with any light sort of uh, s sort of energy behind it. I think that's very real. You know, give yourself to what you're doing during the daytime, but also save some for yourself so that you're not in complete burnout mode. I've seen people sort of burn out completely, very talented people. You know, people have worked on AAA games for far too long and given too much of themselves, and just not reserved enough for when they get sitting back in front of their own machines or in, inside of their own space to draw and paint a picture or something. You have to be... You have to be a whole being and you have to be working towards just fulfilling what it is that you want to do as well as, you know, meeting the requirements of real life and real living. At the same time, I would say just make sure to keep that that small spark alive to create that little thing. Even if it's just a small little thing, it's it can go a long way. I mean, I like to quote the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing all the time. It started as a joke, man. <laughs> it was, And it's not a joke anymore, right? right. It started as a joke in a kitchen. Empire. A couple hundred dollars, you know, it started as a joke and there's no, a lot of people, I'm, I'm very critically driven when it comes to my, the way I think about things. I'm very much a, a positive person when it comes to thinking that anything's possible, especially being around the team, uh, you know, the ZBrush team at Pixelogic for so many years and the tremendous level of um, drive that the programming team has as well has taught me exponentially to live, you know, a more full life in a way. I was just speaking about that this morning and I think that you know, that's what we're trying to disseminate as, you know, as, as instructors and as professors and, and teachers and, and just fellows in the industry is to say, make sure that you, you know, just keep it, just keep something going. Cause you know, you might think it's crazy and it's like 500 bucks. Those guys started that empire with $500 and ended up closing the, closing the accounts with $260 million for the rights to create cartoons, you know, and it's not far fetched. You know, you, you rise to your highest aspiration of yourself and you descend to the lowest 
uh, realization of yourself. It's up to my, you. Free yeah, my, your mind. <laughs> Free best, your mind. Yeah. My best advice for someone that's got a full time job, because honestly, that's what I did. I had a full time job too. Make it on make it on purpose. Pick a even if it's one time a week. Pick a day. Pick a time and do then sculpt. And don't worry about if it's good or if it's bad. It's just sculpt and yeah. have a goal of something you maybe want to create. Start out simple. Then start out maybe you're only going to sculpt the face. Right, because you also, as artists, we want to have the oh, it's finished, it looks awesome, I'm so proud of it moment, of course, right. But guys, I have, I can't. Uh, Joe Druss knows because he laughs at me constantly in my streams when I said, oh, I'm gonna show this, and he's yeah, yeah, okay, you're gonna show it, right? We all have work we never get done. It, I don't think there's an artist that doesn't. Have <laughs> they all go to die in his backyard, apparently. If we can put the artwork we don't get done and put it in a closet, all of our closets will just, just have like stuff that flies out at us, right? Don't and then don't let that, that get that off your shoulder. Everyone has that. I don't care how good an artist is. I think everyone has that where they get stuff that they're working on. Even the masters, they'll they'll have eight sculpts maybe they're working on, right? And then they'll just oh, I'm in the mood for this one today, and they'll go work on that one. Oh, I'm in the mood for that one today. There's nothing. And that's wrong it too. That. Yeah, you're raising a good point there. You, you know, again, I I don't like to sort of overtly state these things as facts, but we need to manage. Um our expectations of self, you know, it's one thing to work really hard. And then at the same time, try to manage your expectations of self and, and really, if you like it, other people will like it, you know, if you, and it, and it doesn't matter who likes it really. I think at the end of the day, a lot of criticism, I've seen a lot of self handcuffing and, and self sort of muting that goes on. And I would say that that's just something to try to move away from as quickly as possible, you know? Right. Well, we don't have too much time left in this segment, unfortunately. We got a couple minutes here too, but I, I want to, uh, Ethan. Where do you, for me, where do you see yourself now? Where's your goal? What are you trying to get to as a student still at BYU? I know you said you want to get to the main campus at BYU. Where is your ultimate place you want to be? I feel like um, my goals at a, as an artist would be balancing my two D and three D, as I sort of expressed before. Um, I did do a lot of 3D in high school and I'm doing a lot of 2D now. And, you know, I could say my ultimate goal is to get into a program or to get a certain job or to work in a certain studio. But I feel like my actual goal is to just be able to competently and uh, precisely create creative concepts of my own. And that's, right. <laughs> that's just my two cents. Right. And then Val, you're already at a studio. Are you allowed to share where you're at? Yes, I'm at the mill in Los Angeles. Right. <clears throat> so he's gotten that path. So these are two students, for example, Val's in where he wanted to go. He's followed his path. And Ethan's on his way to wanting to get where he wants to be. Right. So that's why we wanted to bring in some students' perspective as well into this conversation and not just us as instructors. Um, like Joseph's teaching all the time, I teach. And then, of course, Louie and Jason are constantly teaching. I think I wanted also to make sure that you guys get the nod, man, because I, you know, we knucklehead around a lot when we get when we get down to doing this live thing on the Zebra Sun. But Joseph, trust, you know, you should be given a high five, digital high five, for all of the content. Yeah, for all the content and all of the all the great work uh, through the years. You, you know, I know may, maybe a lot of people don't say this to you. We've had an exponential impact on so many people. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that you know the the educational offerings that you're providing for people are are um, genuinely appreciated and really are helping to change lives. Um, you know, if I have students that have That's, difficulties, so just refer them to like a video or something. I'll say, you know, check out this guy here. He's 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 put he's putting it together. He's throwing it down. That's so. that's all from the the mentors I've had. You know, even yeah, when exactly. I started, like I as Paul was saying when we were in school, like I there was no path to anything video game related, and that's what I wanted to do. And I had one advisor that was like, well, what do you think you need? And she let me change my entire curriculum to what I needed. And then when I finally got a job in the industry. Um, the first guy I went to, Eric Armstrong, I sat right next to him. I had a gazillion questions to ask him, and I just sat behind him, and he showed me everything. Um, and it was just like that information and that sharing and that knowledge was just, it was perfect. And so it's like one of those passion things. It's like I I, I can't sit back. <laughs> like I have to pass this on. Yeah. Um, it was just yeah. too helpful. That's a true, you know, again, in those, in those moments back in the day here, the, you had to be here at the right time, I guess, and the timing and luck. Uh, the late Glenn Orbick was my drawing teacher here in Los Angeles when I first arrived, and the late Jack Boston here at the Noman School as well. And I think for, for me, I'll, I'll mirror what you're saying and echo that as well. This is a sense of tremendous responsibility. It's almost like a like a black belt mentality I was telling Valentin about earlier. 
the process of just making sure that others uh, get access to the information. And because, you know, I realize I'm immortal uh, and it's, I'm not going to be here forever. And I, again, I've said this before in various oh, other circumstances. Forever. There's recording. There's recording. <laughs> that's very sweet. Um, but I think, I think that's in all seriousness, I think that it's important that, you know, I've said this in a way before where I'm just trying for me, at least to burn as many people with this, this vigor to try to go after it. And I'm still someone who's relentless. I was speaking to Jaime before we went live and I was like, I'm still reaching for things that are, you know, um, maybe uh, out of reach. And so I'm just constantly, I'm not, I'm not making a closing remark here, but I'd like to say this because I want it on the record is that as long as you're constantly moving forward and trying to reach further, I, I can't see that being unfruitful. And, you know, it may be frustrating, you know, it's very frustrating to be driven like that. And, and maybe it is a life of frustration. And Joseph's nodding his head. He's like, yeah, man, I know exactly what you're saying. I, I just like, you know, uh, this unquenched desire to continue to, to go and, and that no one can teach that. That's just like, got to come from, you know, right. so, Wait, so we're going to be closing up this segment before I do, I'm going to ask Jason and Louie one more question. I know someone brought up Chris Costa, which by the way, he was self-taught. He taught himself yeah. and he had to drive. He used to be a banker. <laughs> like, come on. Same, same here. We have that in common. <laughs> Louis, you can be a banker too. So Jason and Louie, the one question I want to ask you, because it gets asked all the time, right? How can I learn ZBrush? What's the easy? So one question I want to ask the both of you, and I'll start with Jason. What is maybe the one thing someone can do uh, that you give them as an assignment inside of ZBrush that you see that the lights going off for your students? I know what mine is. Do you guys have? Do you have one? Jason, do you have one that? I mean, you know, <clears throat> I think right off the bat is just, you know, giving them a limited tool set, you know, like only focus on just these two, these two or three tools, uh, you know, don't get overwhelmed by the interface, you know, and all that stuff. But yeah, but absolutely, you know, really just working from, um, you know, working from reality, working from reference, uh, finding something simple, um, you know, and then just be, you know, going more complex from there. I mean, uh, obviously all you guys and all this stuff online, there's no limit of resources for them to just keep, keep you know, pursuing and growing and sharing and inspiring. You know. Right. So just in essence, keeping it simple, right? Just yeah. don't try to chew the whole software out in one chunk. Just no, compa nimble. totally a compartmentalization, nimble. Paul. Nimble. Yeah, yeah, totally a compartment. You were cutting out there. Totally a compartmentalization. I think for me, the pragmatic approach would be to say, if you look at ZBrush or anything as a matter of steps, and you look at it as, you know, if for, this is for me, the thing that resonates with students, and it really makes the results exponentially better than um, what I was seeing before I instituted this some years ago was, there are like five major stages, you know, the first stage is construction. And through that construction process, you know, uh, collaborators don't have to worry about the entire interface. What they worry about is coming into contact with the geometry tab, the tool tab, and the subtool tab. And that that really allows people to move away from just like, oh my God, what are all these things happening to me? You know, if they can if they can wrap their mind around that. And then the second part is I know I, we were at SIGGRAPH many moons ago and I, I thought maybe a journalist thought I was being very facetious, but I, I'm, I'm always very respectful. I, I said masking was my favorite feature when we released Dynamesh. And I think they misunderstood why I thought that. And I was just like, if you can teach someone to load a sphere and turn on Dynamesh and make masks, then you've just circumvented 3D modeling in a way that is so rapid. Which that if it, part of the point of Dynamesh. Was yeah, which is exactly it. And that was the point that I was trying to make is to say, if you can draw a mask, and this goes out to the world, if you can draw a mask on a surface, you then, can then you can sculpt anything. I really firmly believe that. You know, I, I just, I'll leave it at that. Right. Black, na black nails and all. Ethan, in, uh, Ethan, do you have anything that you, as a student, that you saw, hey, this is where I had my moment of this technique or this assignment that was given to me? I feel like more than any one technique or any specific way to approach things, it's the attitude of the virtue of patience and the attitude of determination. <laughs> sure. um, I, I was lucky enough to send in the concepts that I was proud of. But there are like uh, like that was mentioned before. I have had plenty of things that are in my little artistic closet that I really do not want to see mm -hmm. uh, the, see them ha be in the light of day. You know, <laughs> it's right. my freshman year. It was difficult, both with the the actual software and just coming to terms with my limitations uh, of being an artist at the time. Um, to everyone who's watching right now, um, it's just going to take time. And you're just going to have to accept that and embrace it. And with time, you could do anything, really. 
Yeah. Do you have anything, uh, Val, to add to that? Is there any assignment that you had that really? Sure, sure. I think I think the reality of education in general is that you never stop hitting new plateaus, which means that you'll never stop plateauing in a way, but you'll never s stop hitting new spheres of height. And it's up to you to just go to the next one. And sometimes on a Monday, I just suck, you know, but it doesn't stop me from going to Tuesday and, and Tuesday all of a sudden, like I deserve my job again. And just <laughs> hitting to the next sphere and the next sphere, and that's that's growth more than anything else, right? So, yeah, I've hit a lot of plateaus, and I'll hit a lot more, and everybody will all the time. That's just, just the point. way it is. It ne you never end. It always yeah. keeps going. No, never absolutely. Yeah, and you that's think, the point. You think yeah. Chris Costa never stops going up too? No. Never. And the learning, guys, Paul, the same thing is true. You, you know this. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, guys, that the learning isn't just about, like I said, you know, you might take a walk down a skid row and you might learn something. And that might impact the way that you would approach something yeah. in, in your artistic endeavors. The other thing is also yeah. we have this tool of social media. And I remember posting a little sketch drawing I did in an airport once some years ago. And Joseph Druss sent me a note through some social media thing. He said, never stop drawing with a little heart. And it meant the world to me. And I thought, you know, th there's value in that, just like saying, uh, you know, affirming nice things to people and, and sort of helping each other stand up and, and go further. So, you know, right. using your energy in positive ways to build up others uh, is also a way to, you know, I'm not blowing smoke up anyone's butt. If it's, if it needs work, it needs work, you know? Yep. Um, but if it's something cool, then, you know, we can, we can all stand behind each other as a community across the globe at this point and really help each other rise to, to new heights. I mean, that's the point of like a black belt seminar is to go in there and get thrown across the room and, you know, just, uh, try to pick up something from someone else and, and push it further and say, thank you, you know, yep. which and the, the other thing that, uh, Ethan mentioned, like the closet of models that you're not happy with, like that shows growth too. Like, that's the thing. Like, you are now looking at stuff you've done and you're growing from that. Like, you've already grown. Like, that right there, the sentence you said, is you're growing and expanding yeah. and becoming better and better and better. And that's all it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, guys, unfortunately, we're out of time. What a I wild really ride. Appreciate you guys. It goes by fast, right? <laughs> it goes does. by real fast. <laughs> I really appreciate you again, Louie, Jason, Ethan. Let's give them all around. Valentine, thank you for thank joining you. us for this segment talking about education yeah. and getting in because that's what a lot of these people here watching i know you guys are all trying to learn these tips and these tricks and figure out how to do things i think this this is the point of this segment and we wanted to celebrate stem today being here in the united states with you know thinking about all you getting into science technology engineering and math and like i said zbrush is technology and there's engineers and everything using it right so hopefully this segment gave you guys a little passion that everybody's as artists are in certain points, right? Yeah, I want to thank Paul too. Thanks for putting this together and asking us to do this. It's really, you know, it's nice to break away from uh, the, the usual mania and jumping around throwing bricks of uh, microphones at people and, and have a real conversation <laughs> for a minute. But uh, yeah, we've never done something like this. That's why we wanted to do no. this kind of, let's have a little conversation wrapped around this. You know. Um, so we're, we're not done guess. though yet today, right? So no, ZBrush continues to change people's lives the world over. And, you know, Paul and, and Joseph are going to take you on a wild ride, ripper and ride up until what, Monday? Monday, no, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Into, into Tuesday. Well, you know, Wednesday in Japan, if you're in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. That's I true. do. I do say I want to go take Jason's class right now, though. I mean, is there <laughs> any space when I get in there? You know, we'll have to sneak you in. You'll just have to. Like, <laughs> it looks down. amazing. Like the, the images Paul shows, like I would have died for that. Like uh, that, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cool. Jason, you, you get a high five as well. And I was very honored to work with you when I had the chance to work with you and, and Ethan in the classroom. Likewise. Your, your, your disposition and your, your manner as well is very warm and open for the kids. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I want to thank everybody again. Thanks so much. You know, yes, thank, thank you all. You. Thank you guys for having us in. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Thank you for being here. We're going to do some uh, giveaways and then we're going to be going into Steve Saunders, who is an amazing. And speaking of all this, he's a clay guy that came into the brush. And now he mirrors guys. He mirrors both. You're going to get this is going to be awesome. He's going to walk you around the studio. He's going to show you guys how he's in ZBrush. He prints stuff and then he still hand sculpts on top of it. So, Jason, if you're, you don't go anywhere, man, you're Paul, like, tell Doug yeah. E in the chat box. Doug E, thanks. I'll accept the coffee. Ice, black, please. <laughs> I don't drink coffee. No, so, he's, again, he's he wants to buy me coffee, silly. Paul is the only person in the industry that doesn't drink coffee. It's true. Uh, I don't. <laughs> no, Doug E here in the chat box said he wanted to buy me a coffee. I'm in. Cold, iced with black, no sugar. I don't drink, I don't drink caffeine really at all. Tea from time to time. That's it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being a yes, part of this. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank I'll you. talk to you guys later for sure. Don't worry. You haven't lost me. I'm going to annoy you now for the rest of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. And if you uh, haven't yet, get ZBrush, please. Yeah, and I got, I got the brand on the arm. Wear your love on the arm. Where is it? Can I get uh, that? Mine's right here. Can you see it? Is there? There you go. You tilt it down. Right it. That's called wearing the brand on your arm, uh, ladies and gentlemen. A little washed out. Turn your wrist. Turn your. Oh, there you go. I That's saw it. Real it's a little washed it. out. What can you do? There, there you go. I look at those That's cups commitment. too. That's the brand manager yeah. for life, pal. Yeah, uh -oh. Louis Horton. Just when you thought you've seen enough. Too. 2020, the year yeah. of clarity. Hashtag 2020. I'm out. Louis got merchandise. <laughs> if you did, those are all the coffee cups. Paul gets stole it. Yeah, Louis stole it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.